When testing for voter fraud, rather than making first recourse to lawyers and judges, instead the first recourse should be made to mathematicians and scientists. So here I'm going to show you the voter consistency test, which is an excellent test for voter fraud. It's similar in principle to the bit parity test that's used to check binary code for errors. So the way the, uh, the voter consistency test works is you have to take a look at uh, different vote counting periods. So here's period one, here's period two. You could have you know, any number of periods being counted. And then here we'll just use a two-party example of Democrats and Republicans uh, voting for a Democrat or Republican. You can do, uh, you can do uh, normalized uh, values to uh, get rid of, you know, let's say you have independence if you don't want to count those, or you can count those too. It works either way. What you're looking at in each of these periods is you're looking at the, uh, the fraction here of, of the Republican voters who uh, had their votes counted in the first period and what fraction of those voted for a Republican or voted for a Democrat. And in the second period, we have the fraction of uh, Republicans who voted, had their votes counted in the second period. And again, we see the, uh, the uh, fraction of Republicans who voted for a Republican and the fraction of Republicans who voted for a Democrat. So uh, if we have voter consistency, then these fractions, these respective fractions will be equal. In other words, the fraction of Republicans voting for Republicans will be the same in both periods as will the fraction of Republicans voting for Democrats. It'll be the same because basically the voting pattern will stay the same among members of the same party and the same with, uh, with the Democrats. Now, let's look at a case where uh, the uh, voter consistency test has failed. Um, here we have uh, a percent, a, a fraction of the uh, Republicans are voting for a Republican and a fraction for, of the Republicans are voting for a Democrat. But here we see a much smaller fraction are voting for a Republican in the uh, second counting period and a much larger fraction are uh, are voting for a Democrat in the second period. Now, how could that happen? Well, one way it could happen is if uh, votes that were cast <clears throat> for a Republican were switched to a Democrat. And the same over here, we see uh, a much larger fraction of uh, the votes being cast by Democrats are being cast for, for a Democrat in the second period. So, uh, how could that happen? Well, you could you could stuff the votes, or again you could switch votes uh, for a Republican. You could switch those to to Democrat. So let's look at this graphically. So here we look at uh, we're just looking at arbitrarily at eleven counting periods. They can be taken periodically throughout the uh, throughout the vote counting process as a uh, as a sample. And here we see the um, <clears throat> the uh, votes are, uh, you know, we look at the fractions. And here we see voter consistency. Let me go to the next one. So here we see that the voter consistency test is passed because uh, the, uh, the fractions are staying the same. So uh, these are the fractions of the uh, respective parties voting for their own party. And these are the uh, respective fractions of the uh, different parties voting for the, for the opposite party. But then all of a sudden these radically change. So this, this would be a case uh, of uh, clear election fraud. So uh, the great thing about the voter consistency graph is it puts uh, it puts the uh, election uh, forensics 
it gives it gives this to the uh, to the mathematicians and scientists first, first, and then after they uh, they complete their analysis, then it goes to the lawyers, and then to the judges, and uh, that's the uh, that's the proper procedure, and and also to the uh, you know to the legislator, and to uh, you know to the president and the governors and so forth. So uh, first we have to do the math, and so that's why it's very important to uh, set things up so that we're looking at the data in terms of what data we need to count and what data we need to keep track of and what data we need to graph. Because uh, uh, this is the way that you actually go about it mathematically and scientifically in order to examine whether or not there was any fraud in an election.